Will. Welcome back to Apple One to One Training. We appreciate you guys joining us for this amazing video. We are going to talk about how to use QuickTime Player. So the QuickTime Player is the essentials of our Mac. It runs our audio, runs our video, runs everything. It's the most important app to understand. You may not use it a lot, but there is some amazing tools to use in QuickTime Player. So I have it here down at the bottom. Now, one thing you'll notice anytime you launch QuickTime Player, the app itself, it's just going to launch a Finder window because it doesn't have anything to launch. I find that a little weird. I think it could be confusing for a lot of people. So what we're going to do is on the top, we have the menu bar, and we have a bunch of different things that we can do. So we can go right to Movie Recording which if I open this up, it'll open my face. You will see me now here on the screen. All right, so it opened it up, and now you can see a blank screen here. That's because it's actually it's looking at my phone. Uh, so if I launch it up here, yep, I got Advil, everybody. It's using my phone, but I can also switch it to my FaceTime camera. And now you're going to see me. You can switch it, and I have also have an OBS. You can choose the microphone and the quality as well. Going back, we could do an audio recording, so it just brings up an audio field, it just shows you the microphone, it's kind of the same idea. And what we're doing right now is an actual screen recording, so I can't show you that because I'm in the middle of a screen recording, but you could screen record, and we're going to do another video separately on how to do snapshots and screen recording itself. But we're going to open a file, so we have a couple different options here. We can open a file, open a location, open an image sequence. What I'm going to actually do though is open up two videos I have down here. So first off, I'm going to open up my first video, and this is the player so inside the player you can do the airplay you also have the option to do a almost like a picture in picture so it puts it in the corner what's great also about that is that if you are going on websites because I clicked that button right there it puts it right on top so that way it doesn't actually interfere it always be on top of anything I'm doing let's take it out by just clicking this button and then we have more options, including how you, if you want to share it, if you want to share it out to notes, messages, if you want to add it to iCloud sharing, and playback speed. So you could do rewind, slow down, things like that. And then as you play and you move your cursor off the screen, as you can see, it gets rid of the cursor. And as you move your cursor on, it brings it back. Also, under a file, I have some other things I can do here. I could save it as the file if I make some changes, which we'll talk about. I could duplicate it, so if I want a copy of the file, I could do that. I can rename the file, so if I click on rename, I can rename the file and call it Disney, and I'll call it 2023, and we'll call it that, instead of image 0354, and then export as. And now, if I wanted to, let's say that I wanted to send this movie out in a different format, I can. I can actually downgrade it from the 4K down to 1080, 720, 480, and if you just want audio by itself. And the share option, which we saw before, is also right here. The main tool I wanted to talk about was here under edit. There is actually some things you could do with your video. You could actually do rotation. I know a lot of times you'll take video and it's not correctly uh, done. So you could rotate the video. I'm going to undo that by doing Command Z. You could also rotate right. You can flip it around if it's not flipped correctly. Then we're going to talk about splitting the clip. So there is a feature in here where you could drag your playhead to somewhere. Let's say there's a part of the clip you don't want, and maybe there's a section you don't want. Let's say when I started putting my camera down, maybe right here I'll split the clip. So I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to Split Clip. And as you can see now, there are two different sections. A little bar came up here on the bottom, and you can now split this up. So if I went and hit Delete, it deletes that clip, and it's gone. And, and if you look on the top, it says Untitled as well. I'm going to undo that all those things item right there so again you could take a portion of the clip and do that now trim would have done something pretty similar so trim will take the edges of the clip and what I could do is I can drag them to where I want it to start and where I want it to end so you get to pick the portion so this kid got in the way that bad kid and then I'm gonna start it right about here so I'm gonna drag this here and I'm gonna hit trim and now it trims that portion of the video. With the clip, if you want to split something in the middle of the clip, you could do that if you want to split something there, or if you want to trim, which would just do the edges as well. You can also remove video and audio. So if you want to remove that out of the clip, you could do that as well. So if you have a video and you want to remove the audio, you have an opportunity to do that. And then we have view. This just simply shows a tab bar. So if you want to see like tabs, if you open up like two movies at the same time. So I'm going to open up QuickTime. And I could just drag them into each other, and now I have the tab bar. This is the values I can split between the clips. Float on top is exactly what it sounds like. It'll put it on top, similar to what we did before, and then it's like a picture-in-picture. Picture, it's always on top. 
You can control playback speed, subtitles, time display if you want to show that. Show clips, which will just show like the little bar on the bottom if you wanted to see that bar. And loop. So if you want to actually do looping of the video, you can. So if you do loop and then you play the clip to the end, it'll just automatically start the clip over by default. And that's what loop is great. So if you want to do something on replay over and over, you could do the loop feature. There goes my son down the slide. Now, the other feature which is really interesting is they've added this, which is spatial video. So this is a spatial video, and what it's going to do on the screen is display it as that. And now, look what it did. It actually created, this is for the Vision Pro, and you can actually show the left eye, the right eye, you can see both eyes side to side. So it's really interesting how they have this on QuickTime. I don't know what you would use that for, but that's what the spatial video would look like if you did that feature. A lot of this stuff is pretty easy. You can show Movie Inspector, so this gives you the details of your clip, when it was taken, the formatting of it, the data size, all the details that you need to know about your clip are all here, if you had to get very technical. You could increase or decrease the size. You could fit it to screen, natural size. These are all kind of obvious things. Show export progress. So if there was an export feature, which I'm not doing right now, but there's a window that would pop open for that. All right, so we're gonna do my last feature, which is under edit and go add clip to end. Now something I learned as I was recording this, uh, the two videos I showed you before were spatial videos. This add clip to end was not an option whatsoever. I was not allowed to add this as part of that. So something very interesting about spatial video is that it wasn't allowed to do it. You can see here it's highlighted, but when I went to my previous clips, let's open up one of my other ones that were a spatial video, you can see it's completely grayed out. And I believe that it has something to do with the spatial video structure, because I think it might be lost if I do that. So something to keep in mind that it looks like with spatial video you can't do this. So under edit, what we're going to do is we're going to add clips to end, which then I will choose a clip that I want to use, hit choose media, and what it does now is it puts the two clips down here together. I'm going to hit done. So now it's done. I can't save it because it's technically an edited clip. So I'm going to go to export as 1080p, and I'll call it combined weddings. And I'll save it right to my desktop so it's very easy to find. And my export window is now popping up, which again is under the window if you want to see the progress, export progress, which is right here. I'll hide it for right now. Uh, and then that'll be it. And then I'll wait for it to export. It'll be on the desktop. So that is the features of QuickTime. There are a lot of great features you can utilize within QuickTime Player. A lot of small editing features, including moving it around, adding clips to end, splitting clips, removing the audio, removing the video. You can do some minor things on here, but I think it's very valuable to you if you want to do it. And I hope you gain some value out of this, and I hope next time we can talk about how to do screen recordings and screenshots. Thank you very much, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day, and I love